Hello! Today we are going to make a Paul Klee geometric fish. So for this project, you're going to need a piece of white paper. You will need warm colored markers. Remember the warm colors? Yellow, red, and orange. Those colors that make us think of things that are warm. And then I'm gonna grab a black crayon as well. These are the things that we need for the first part of our project to make our fish. So we are gonna first draw the shape of the fish. And you can just draw the best you can, but we're gonna really use our space. So it's gonna be a nice big fish. So I'm gonna start by making a curved line here like that. And then down here, another curved line. But they're not connecting on the ends. Then up here, I'm gonna make a diagonal line in, another diagonal line in for the fish's mouth. Then I'm gonna curve my line like so and bring it down for the tail. And then the same here, but I'm going to curve my line up this time. Like a hill for the tail. And then down here, we can bring our line down and in like a curve. And down to the point here for the tail. Now we're going to add some eyes. Two eyes like that, so two circles, and then two dots, one in each circle for the eyes. Now, Paul Klee is an abstract artist, so that means this fish is not going to be realistic looking. It's going to be um, just kind of whimsical and, and different, kind of like you were making those trees and they were whimsical. They didn't look like exactly like a tree, a photograph of a tree. This fish isn't gonna look exactly like one. Like for instance, two eyes probably wouldn't be on the same side of this fish in real life, but on this fish, it is. And um, we're going to add some geometric lines. That's geometric is means shapes. So I'm gonna take some straight lines and just separate my fish into different sections like this. Not only was Paul Klee um, an abstract artist, so his art did not look realistic, he also did cubism, which had these really sh uh, straight, sharp lines and took real life things and made them very shape-like, like this. Let me do one more little line here. Okay, I'm gonna just go and make another kind of curvy line here for some lips. If you even wanted to add a line up here, you could. A line down here. What do you think? Looks good, I think. All right, now I'm gonna grab my warm colored markers and I'm gonna color in the sections of my fish using these colors. I'm gonna do the best I can at balancing the colors so that I don't have the same colors all right next to each other. Sometimes it might happen and that's okay, but the best that you can try to spread the colors out so that one end doesn't have a bunch of one color, but then the other end doesn't have any of that color. I am going to work at coloring in my whole fish with my warm colors. So I'll start with this yellow and then I'll go to red and orange until all of the sections, except the eyes, I'm gonna leave those white, all the other sections are colored in. Okay, my fish 
finished coloring in my fish with all those warm colors. Sure looks like a abstract, cool, cubist fish to me with geometric shapes. Now we're gonna go to the second part of this, which is the background. Remember our art's never complete without some background. So what I'm going to do is some wax resist, just like we did for um, your trees that you made the other week. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab a white crayon. You could also use a blue crayon if you wanted, or even both if you want, maybe I'll do both, I'll see. And I'm just gonna draw some lines in the background. Remember, don't go over your fish. Make that be the, it look like it's in front of these lines. I'm not gonna be able to see these white lines at all because it'll blend in with the paper, but we are going to do wax resist. So remember that means we're gonna paint um, over our background. And then these crayon lines are really gonna show up. I'm gonna do white and blue. Again, I'm doing these kind of wavy um, vertical lines. Maybe you'll decide to do horizontal lines. Going across, you can decide. Okay, now you can either use watercolors, if you have watercolors, or you can get a plastic bag, a blue marker, and um, a paintbrush like we did the last time. I can grab those things. If you don't have either of those things, you can just color the background with whatever you have, crayons, markers, or anything like that. Okay, I'm gonna get started with my watercolor wax resist background. So I couldn't find a bag today, so I'm gonna use actually just a plastic lid, which will also work. And I've got my um, blue marker. So I'm gonna color on my lid, or if you have a plastic baggie, remember you can use that too. And then grab my paintbrush, dip it in some water, mix it around. And then whoop, paint it on the background. Remember, if it's not spreading around, just add a little bit more water. And then if the color is kind of not very bright anymore, then pick up some more color. Now, when I get to my fish, since I used marker on my fish, I'm not going to go over my fish. I can go over these lines in the background because I did that with crayon. And the outside of my fish was drawn with crayon. So that should stop my watercolor somewhat, a little bit, but if I go too much over, I'm gonna get my water into my marker and then I'm gonna have a mixed blue. What do you think will happen when blue mixes with any of these colors? I'm gonna be getting like greens and purples and things like that. So be as careful as you can when you get close to your fish not to like a, see how I'm going slower once I get closer to my fish, just so I don't get that paint onto my fish. All right, I'm gonna keep working on this. Again, if you do not have a paintbrush at home, then just color your background with blue. Remember what kind of color blue is? Is it a warm color or a cool color? It's a cool color. When I think of the ocean where a fish would be or a lake, I think of cool colors, blues and greens. So that is a contrast. That means it's different than the front colors that are on our fish. So it sticks out more if our background is a cool color and our fish is a warm color. All right, I'm gonna add some more blue to my lid here and keep painting. And there's my finished Paul Klee fish. As you can see, um, once I painted with watercolor, that 
mar that crayon really showed up much more. We can see those white lines when we couldn't even see them before. Um, if you are unable to do painting in the background, remember you can just do um, marker. This one I did with marker in the background. But if you do have a paintbrush, I would suggest trying that watercolor in the background because I really like how that looks. Um, post your picture to Seesaw when you're done. I can't wait to see what types of lines and geometric shapes you put inside your Paul Klee geometric fish and those warm colors on your fish with those cool colors in the background. Have fun.